Hi. This year at DrupalCon North America, I presented this session about migrating into Layout Builder, and unfortunately, it did not get recorded. So I'm here to re-record and represent this so that I can share it with all of you. So I'm going to talk today about migrating into Layout Builder. Uh, it's a project that we undertook um, in the last year, and I learned a lot about Layout Builder and um, a little bit more about migration and how all those things come together. So I just wanted to take that knowledge and share it with you. So I'm Chris. Uh, I'm from a company called Redfin Solutions. We're based out of Portland, Maine. Um, you can find me all over the web at Chris from Redfin. I had a major online identity crisis up until recently. I finally switched everything over to use one handle. So you can find me on the Drupal Slack, uh, GitHub, uh, all that is Chris from Redfin and at chrisfromredfin.dev. So thanks so much for, for being here and listening to me today. So uh, who am I? I am like one of those computer people who <laughs> always knew I wanted to do something with computers. I had a computer when I was eight years old and um, I was never very good at games. So I started learning uh, how to program it and getting on bulletin boards and it was sort of all downhill from there. So I got a degree in computer science from Providence College um, back at the uh, <clears throat> turn of the century. And uh, I worked at a couple places doing software engineering. I did some embedded systems and then I kind of got dabbled in web and then I went to a web company and e-commerce retailer and, you know, generally liked the, the work but was looking for something more. So um, at that company we had started Moonlighting and under the name Redfin Solutions uh, while we still worked full time and then I left that job and went and got a degree in teaching at Appalachian State University. So I really love teaching and sharing my knowledge and helping people understand stuff. So so I'm really happy to, uh, to share this with you today. So after grad school, Redfin Solutions kind of went full time. So now we're a, just a Drupal only development shop based in Portland, Maine in the United States. We're just starting to uh, get into a lot of uh, cool React stuff. We have some React Native. You know, our first Drupal site was on Drupal 4.7 for uh, a center at Harvard University. And, you know, one of our most recent projects is rolling out uh, COVID registrations here in Maine uh, with a decoupled Drupal 9 site. So we've kind of run the whole gamut there. So the project that we have that I'm going to talk with you about today is the University of New England. They're Maine's largest private university. They have two campuses in Maine. They have a study abroad campus in Morocco and they do online learning. So it's a really big organization over there. Um, and they have a focus on hands-on and experiential learning, which is excellent when you look at that campus and you realize they have programs in marine science, environmental science that are hands-on. So it's really great to get out there on the ocean with them. So. They came to us with a need to upgrade to Drupal 8, or we came to them, or one or the other. We have a long, uh, long-standing relationship with them, and you know we all knew that it was time to move on to Drupal 8. So their Drupal 7 site was really built. Um, they were pretty early adopters of Drupal 7, so uh, and it was sort of ahead of its time. You know, it was responsive on day one, um, and. They used component-based design principles in their content authoring experience. You know, it was really cutting edge for the time, but as it was an early adopter, the experience was starting to get a little dated, especially the content editor experience. So the way that they were implementing their component-based design was in WYSIWYG fields using the WYSIWYG templates module, which was, it's really amazing. It does really wonderful things. And that was kind of the best we had. It was almost, um, Poor man's Gutenberg <laughs> for its time, you know, and you could pick a template to embed a figure or a video or do two column, three column, five column layouts. They had cards with statistics on them. You can kind of see in the preview there. Um, but moving these things around and sort of shuffling them, as you've all done, if you've tried to cut and paste and, and left off your closing div tag or something like that, it can be a little tricky. So we know that we can do better. Uh, and so we knew that we needed to reach for Layout Builder to do these kinds of component-based designs um, or, or pages and layouts. So we wanted to use Layout Builder. We wanted that like flexible, responsive, column-based approach where the blocks could actually be interchangeable, movable. It would be you know responsive, 
that's what we wanted to do. But these two paradigms, they do not necessarily go together, right? So these two paradigms can work, but uh, not without a transformation kind of taking place. That is, you can fit a square peg in a round hole as long as you make it round first. <laughs> and so that was our goal. So we can do that sort of thing uh, with Drupal because the migrate API in core is super powerful. The transformation takes place there in that migration. And the migrate module follows a computer science pattern called extract transform load. Okay. In Drupal, we call these source, process, and destination plugins. So the extraction or the source, where are you getting your data? The process or the transform, do you need to manipulate it or massage it? And then where is it going to uh, at the end result? You've got to load it into a database, the destination. Okay. So one thing to point out is I'm not suggesting that we did a full-blown WYSIWYG to layout builder migration, right? There was no need to given the resources that we had available. But supposing you're a regex master and you wanted to like extract from that big WYSIWYG field all of the different components and migrate them to separate sections and separate types of components, that, that can be done. Uh, what I'm going to present to you today is a little bit about what we did, which was actually a more simpler approach, which was to take the body field and migrate it into a one column layout builder layout with one basic text block in there. And we migrated the legacy styles over so that on day one, all the pages would be using the same paradigm. But over time, we could convert the pages that needed it to having uh, more robust layouts. So. The source for us, that was the Drupal 7 database. We actually just connected to the live Drupal 7 database on Pantheon for our live migrations. And then for our dev migrations, we had a development copy locally and we just managed that with a settings local.php where we could point it to the, the, a local copy while we developed our migrations. So what I will show you by the end of this when I demo these concepts is a very simple example site that I've built uh, that will run a handful of you know migration entities uh, bring a couple entities in and that is using CSV files as its source so it's a little bit different but the concepts are all still the same so then the next piece is the transformation process right and we'll come back to this so much like with a butterfly most of the magic happens in the transform or in Drupal the process so uh, I'm gonna get to that when we dive a little bit deeper in and then we want to figure out our destination. What are we loading into? So for us, these are Drupal 8 nodes that are built with layout builder overrides. So all of these uh, Drupal 8 nodes are basic pages. We allowed all basic pages to be overridden with layout builder. And our custom, our, our layout that we built with managed display is very simple. It had one separate field that was always sort of up at the top and then layout builder was everything else, the rest of the page. So there is a small point here that we also migrate into blocks separately. So there's a couple of migrations actually at play, but mentally you should just think about we're going from these D7 basic pages with WYSIWYG templates to Drupal 8 basic pages with layout builder overrides. So what we need to do is understand how layout builder kind of works under the hood. So if you think about any entity reference field in Drupal core or paragraphs or bricks, something like that, um, you have your base entity, which for us is a node, particularly a basic page node, and then that entity has a field on it, and then that field stores references to other entities. So if you had an article node, and that article had a tags field on it, and you tagged it three times, it would store the three taxonomy term IDs for those three terms. The term and all its fields and it, its data lives on the term entity. We're just storing a reference to that entity. So each section of a layout builder layout, so when you say put in a one call section, put in a two call section, then put in a three call section, it's like bowling. If we did a four at the end, we'd have a real good bowling <laughs> layout there. So each section is stored as a section object. And section objects are comprised of section component objects, okay, which are essentially blocks on the site. Okay, so each section component is more or less a block. And so we have this one-to-many relationship from sections to section components. You could take a one-column layout and you could put four blocks in it, stack, 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 stack. 
There's also the one-to-many relationship from the node to the sections in the layout builder layout, right? So you can have a one call section with four blocks in it, and then under that, you can have a two call section, and each of those regions has two blocks in it, each section components. So the thing to remember is that sections have section components but the node has the sections so this one-to-many relationship from sections to section components but then also one-to-many from node to the sections okay so if you were uh listening very intently you might have said that i've said you might have heard that i said blocks a few times right so a section component is fundamentally a block especially in terms of what we're talking about where we're building page content by um, using these blocks of content that don't appear anywhere else. You know, we're not talking about reusable blocks like you would go and create and, and put in your left sidebar on the whole, you know, about section, something like that. These are non-reusable blocks, right? So there's two different flavors of blocks on Drupal 8 sites. There's the reusable blocks and the non-reusable blocks. And really the difference between whether they are or aren't reusable is a Boolean checkbox that's on that block content table. You know, reusable yes, reusable no. Okay. So, actually, let me back up. So, a good way to think about this is that when you go to structure blocks and go to your custom block library, you're creating reusable blocks there. And when you go to, uh, layout builder and add a section and then add a custom block in there you're creating a non-reusable block so that that boolean field is really mostly for the ui so custom block library doesn't show all the uh, non-reusable blocks on it for example okay so where is all this stored so we have this node and it has this sort of layout builder field on it which then is storing these references to sections and section components, right? So the sections and section components, they actually all get serialized into one big blob. And that blob is then stored much like any other field is stored on Drupal. And that's in the entity layout builder layout table. So for us, you know, we're storing the layout on basic page nodes. So this table is node layout builder layout. And it has a lot of the same columns that any other field table would have. It has the entity ID, the uh, revision ID, the delta, right? And so just like that, except instead of storing those three references that are just like taxonomy term IDs, it's actually storing a, a serialized section object right there in the database table. And it looks a lot like this. So each section becomes a new field. And then you can see here, if you're kind of looking around through the serialized data, you'll see a section component object. You'll see a region. You'll see um, that it's provided by layout builder. Um, and you might see sort of toward the bottom there, inline block colon basic, right? Which is the type of block or type of section component that this really is, okay? So it's very much like taxonomy in terms, except instead of storing simply an ID, it's storing this serialized section object, uh, which contains these section components that are in that section, okay? And there's one more piece of the puzzle just to understand behind the scenes what's happening, uh, and that is the inline block usage table. And that simply stores, it does what it says on the tin, it's storing uh, where these inline blocks are used. So if you're using uh, you know, a non-reusable block ID number 12, you're storing that on node 73, then you'll have 12 node and 73 in your inline block usage table. And uh, initially I thought I had to manage this table myself and I was doing so, but I discovered later um, that if you use the API correctly, uh, then you will, th this will all be managed for you. So I'll point that out when we get to the code. Okay, so we need to take this now pile of coal, a little bit more of a raw material, from 
just a big blob of HTML and put it in the shiny diamond that is Layout Builder, right? We need to sort of transform this thing along the way. And the big question is how? How do we actually do that? Okay. So let's talk about the migration. So step one is really to migrate in the blocks, right? So blocks have an entity ID, a delta, a title, and a body, okay? So in my simple example, I'm providing all of these fields, right? So if I go and look at the actual source data for this migration, these are the fields that I'm providing. So on entity one, we have three text blocks. Uh, they have their own titles and their own bodies. And then on entity ID two, I've got four, uh, delta zero, one, two, and three. And they have titles and they have bodies as well, okay? So that is what we're looking at. So in the UNE site, I actually migrated into blocks from the body field of the Drupal 7 node. Uh, in this example in CSV, I've just got its own blocks CSV uh, in order to keep things simple. So let's look at that migration. So that migration, some metadata about it, just it's in my group and it's got a label and its migration ID is called blocks. So this is the blocks migration. The source plugin is CSV files and the path is this blocks.csv file. There are four fields, offset zero, one, two, and three, and I give them names like title, body, entity ID, and delta, which means when I come down here and I wanna say that the uh, title goes to the info of the block entity, uh, and then the body goes into the body, and then I'm just defaulting them all to be basic HTML, and then whether or not it is reusable. So like I said, this is just a field on block content entities in Drupal 8. So if you want it to not be reusable, you just set it to zero. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just setting all of these to be non-reusable blocks or, or inline blocks, okay? And then again, the destination is just uh, entity block content with a default bundle of basic. So the basic block is the one you get out of the box with the standard profile, it just has a title and a body. And that's what I'm migrating into. So we give it a title, a body, a format for that body, and we tell these all that these are not reusable blocks. So if I go to custom block library, I will not see them, okay? So you take whatever you want to be your chunks in your layout builder sections, and you migrate them into blocks, non-reusable blocks this way, okay? So then step two is that we need to migrate in the nodes. So if I go here and look at the source data, all I'm going to see is nid and title. But from Drupal 7, we should have a body, right? But again, we've migrated the body already into blocks. So what we need to do is figure out how to load the bodies up separate and map those. And that's where a lot of the magic happens. So nid and title, and then we got to deal with the layout and the body, okay? So let's look at that migration. That's uh, where, like I said, a lot of the magic happens. So some more metadata. This is now the uh, nodes migration, not the blocks migration. Got a label, got a migration group, and we should have already migrated in blocks before we migrate in nodes, okay? So the source looks very similar, uh, except you'll notice that I'm using a custom source plugin. Uh, I'm not just using the basic CSV one from the contrib module. I'm using my own that overrides. We'll get to that in just a second. And then the path is the nodes CSV file, which is just what I showed you before with the nid and the title. It's only got the two fields. So for title, title. And for the user ID, I'm just making user one own everything. And then if we skip down to destination here real quick, you see I'm just migrating into uh, basic pages. Okay, so this is really how we're mapping in the body. So layout builder layout on line 36, that's the field that I'm talking about where we store all the sections and section components in that serialized blob in the database. Okay. So how do we actually get something to put in there? What's the source field for layout builder layout? Well, it's this thing called components and I made that up. <laughs> and that is why I have a custom plugin, okay? So I'm gonna go just jump over here real quick and I'm gonna get into my module, 
So if I go into web, I go into modules, I go into custom, my migrations module. Now I've got a custom source plugin called my pages. Okay? And again, that's the source plugin that I'm using to get data. So I'm capitalizing on the prepare row method that's provided by Migrate Plus, I believe, to um, add or manipulate the source row data on the way in, which is exactly what we're trying to do here. So my My Pages class, it extends the base CSV class and simply does my stuff in prepare row. Okay, so what prepare row does is we start with a simple components array. Then we fetch all the blocks that are associated with this row. And then we iterate over each of those blocks, building up an array of their IDs. And then we set a new source property called components to that array that we built up. And then, of course, we uh, call the parent prepare row in case some other um, object in our chain here in our class hierarchy wanted to manipulate the row as well or uh, said that we should skip it or something like that. So uh, I just add my new source property on. So fetch blocks, what that does is it just goes to the migrate map table for that blocks migration that we wrote and it just looks up, hey, incoming block you know one what's the destination ID of that block here? You know, is it 12 or 17 or whatever it is? So that's all it does is it selects the destination ID from the migrate map blocks table. Uh, and then we use uh, the passed in row to get the ID of that row so that we can get the right destination. And we query all, we sort by the source ID two, which I said was the Delta so that we get them in the correct order that they should appear. And then, yeah, we just fetch all that, and then we've got our destination IDs. Okay. Now, there's also a method called uh, migrate lookup that's available on migrations. So I probably could have just called this arrow migration lookup instead of this fetch blocks. Um, I think one of the great things about migrations is that if your code's not perfect, you're still probably throwing it away after the migration is done. So uh, even though I didn't do this the, the perfectly right way, um, it still works. Okay, so that's how we get now our body field and we need to map it into layout builder layout, but we still have not transformed it because remember all we're doing with components is it's just an array of IDs, but we don't store just an array of IDs like with a taxonomy term. We have to store this serialized section object on each of these fields. Okay, so for that, I wrote a custom process plugin. Okay, so if I move up from here and go to source plugin migrate and go to the process section instead, you'll see my custom process plugin. And what this does, the main entry point for a process plugin is this transform uh, method and you get the value passed in, and you also get the uh, migrate executable and the row and the destination property should you need those. Uh, value is really where, um, it, it's our components, it's our array of destination IDs of blocks in order, okay? So what I do is I start again with a empty components array, and then I get a, a generator service, uh, the UUID, service generator. So we need universally unique identifiers here. And so uh, I just need to call that so I have it later. Then I iterate through each value. Uh, so again, that array of IDs as each section component. So each one of those blocks is going to become a section component. And then since again, we only have the ID, I need to fully load that block content object. So I just load the block content object into block content. As long as I was able to load something, I'm good to go. Let's skip over this config real quick here. And then I'm going to make a new section component for each block and store that off into that components array. 
So this is why you need a universally unique identifier as the first section component uh, parameter. Uh, first parameter to the constructor for section components is a UUID, so that's why I needed the generator service to get one. The second one is which region of the layout for your section do you want to put this component? So I'm putting it in content because I'm migrating into a single one call layout. It only has one region and that region is called content. And then you pass in this configuration. So let's go back and look at the configuration. So the ID is the plugin and derivative that you're using for your section component. So for us, it's an inline block. It's a basic non-reusable block. And then after the colon is the bundle that you're gonna use. So again, I'm using basic blocks. Then for the label, I'm just using the label for the block content as it came in. So the label of that section component in Layout Builder is the same as the label is on the block. Remember, uh, so in the Drupal migration, what I did when I migrated the blocks in was I said, because I was coming from nodes, I just used the node title as the block. And I said like body for nid whatever colon and then I did like the title of the node um, so that's good as a developer I could always go back and look at that and say all right where is this coming from oh, okay this was node 73 on the old site I pull that up and I can compare um, content and so what's cool about that on a reusable block I was able to say for label display just false I don't want um, don't show that label ever um, you may want this to be true depends on your migration but what that's controlling is whether or not this section component title should show in Layout Builder. When you display it, display it in view mode full, and then set the block revision ID. So the block revision ID is really important here. One thing to note is that anything in core has to be revisionable, and that includes Layout Builder layouts, which is really amazing. Um, it was a big need for UNE to be able to have revisions and revisionability, and the fact that we could do that with Layout Builder from day one, no problem, was really amazing. So um, you set the block revision ID here and say which revision belongs in your layout builder layout. And if you remember what I said before about that inline block usage table, that if you don't use, uh, if you don't set that correctly, so right here, if you set block revision ID just to null instead of the actual revision ID, it won't update your inline block usage table. And I actually had a whole workaround for a while using that where I was uh, doing event subscribers and looking it up and updating it from null. And as it turns out, I just need to make sure I set the uh, revision ID here. And then the serialized block content here. So you take the block content, you serialize it, and that's your block serialized. Um, Dan Sasser did a really amazing blog on migrating paragraphs into Layout Builder. And he actually uses null for block serialized here, and it probably still works. <laughs> so um, it may do this part for you if you don't set it. I was just setting it here, which also works. And then context mapping. Both Dan and I have that as an empty array, which is kind of interesting uh, because when I did present this at DrupalCon, uh, Wim Lears was able to say, I think that might cause some trouble, uh, especially I think with things like uh, BigPipe and caches and some of that stuff. But this did work for us and it apparently worked for Dan as well. So I look forward to learning a little bit more about that context mapping. Okay. So we iterate through, we have a new section component, but then ultimately remember what I said, each uh, field entry is a section object. So what you then do is you build a section object. You say which layout it's gonna use. I'm using a one call layout. You can specify any settings for it, which the only setting I think on the core layouts is the administrative title. And if it's optional, and if you leave it blank, it just refers them to section one, section two, section three. So I just left it blank. And then this components array that we've built up, so an array of section components, you just drop that on and say that those are the all the components that belong in this section, and then you return that. So that is ultimately how that works. You return a section for each thing. So that's that. Um, there are you know, some more nuances to this, but I look forward to hearing from you in the comments or on the Redfin blog or reach out to me on Twitter. 
Um, and I want to encourage you to put your hands on this stuff as well. So all this code is in layout. Uh, all this code is in GitHub. It's in my repo, Chris from Redfin slash decon 21 dash MILB. So that's DrupalCon 2021 dash migrating into layout builder. So you can get the code from there. It's a fully functional site. Um, it has a database that it ships with. And if you're using DDEV, you can just restore the snapshot or spin it up on DDEV very easily. So there's instructions here. If you are not using DDEV, uh, if your path is not varwhtml, you might need to update your migrations. Um, but there's some great little tools in there. There's a view to see all blocks, whether they're usable or not reusable. So give it a try. Let me know how it goes. And thanks so much for watching my video.